You're right there, it's Tim Golf 5 Tango Mike. If you're new to the channel, think about clicking subscribe and maybe clicking the notification bell for any videos. And uh, well, if you're a returner or a regular, great to have you back. Now, over the last week or so, I've been looking at uh, 40 meter antennas in my garden. And uh, last time, it must be about a week ago now, I released a video about uh, linear loading, where I put together an antenna for 40 meters to fit into my short space of about 29 feet. And I'll put a little link up there for that one, so you can have a look at that. Now, another idea I've got, of course, is uh, this time to put together a doublet antenna, which is basically a dipole in all but name, but fed in this case with ladder line, 450 ohm, 300 ohm, or anything else you want to put together as, as balanced feeder. Now, the beauty of this design, of course, it gives you multiple bands. The antenna that I'm looking at here is uh, 48 feet, electrically, 46 feet in terms of the actual length of the antenna because you allow for a bit of velocity factor. And I've chosen or gone for that sort of length because it's about a 3 8 wave on 40 metres, which means efficiency-wise it's not too bad at all. Looking at the layout of the antenna, and I've got, uh, I've got kind of a rough picture of it here on, on my screen through MMA and A modelling. And we can see here, look, you've got the, um, got the feed point at the centre there with that circle. On the right-hand leg, uh, it goes down, uh, by the way, the, the apex is about nine, nine and a half metres above the ground. That's about 30-something 30 feet, 31 feet or something like that. And then that leg goes down to a height of about uh, seven metres off the ground and slopes down further to about five metres off the ground, or maybe six metres off the ground which is about 19 feet. And the left-hand leg goes down to about a height of about, let's have a look, I'm just checking on my screen actually, let's have a look, yeah. Goes down to a height of about seven and a half meters and goes down vertically then to a height of about five meters. So, um, you know, it's not up that high, but uh, it squeezes in about, uh, well, electrically would be about 48 feet. It's about 46 foot in length, but uh, when you've got insulated wire, you've got a little bit extra in terms of velocity factor. So electrically, it's about 48 feet. Now, 48 feet, that's about, uh, in total, what's that? That's, a, that's around about sort of 14 and a half metres or so of total length. Now, of course, it's non-resonant uh, on, that, on that sort of length of antenna. But it should be long enough for us to get a decent performance on 40 metres. So uh, let's have a look at 40 metres and see how well it does. And what I've got and done, I've used um, MMANA for this. I'm just bringing up my computer now. I've used MMANA for this um, because, as I say, it's, it's good in terms of giving a, a good idea of the antenna's likely performance. Even though, of course, we all know that we need real-world examples to back this up. And I have with this antenna because I've used this antenna in the past in this sort of configuration. It does work really well. Let's have a look then at the, um, well, at, at the far field plot there for 40 metres. And what you've got in front of you is a typical antenna at 40 metres, horizontal, uh, at that sort of height. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to get an antenna at very high, you know, half wave length at 40 metres, that's 20 metres, that's 60 odd feet above the air, above the ground to begin to, um, shall we say, have a pattern which is more commensurate with a, with a lower angle of radiation. But to be honest with you, what we've got here is a typical, fairly low dipole, whatever you want to call it, for 40 metres where most of the um, most of the RF is, is going pretty much straight up. Now, if you watched the previous video on the linear loaded dipole for 40 metres, you'd know I compare it or compared it with a flat top dipole, a full halfway flat top dipole for 40 metres. So um, this time I've compared this doublet for 40 metres with the linear loaded, and I've also compared it with that same flat top full half wave uh, full sized half wave dipole, if you see what I mean, for 40 metres. Let's compare it with the linear loaded uh, dipole first of all then. We can see here, look, there's very little difference. The uh, the uh, the doublet is the sort of the, the pinkish colour and the darker red is the linear loaded uh, dipole. I mean, there's, there's hardly any difference, there really is. Uh, the linear loaded dipole is about five or six metres, I think, above the ground. And the doublet is, you know, okay, it is a bit higher in places, but it goes down to a height of about uh, five metres off the ground. So there's not a lot in it. If you look at 40 metres, the difference between nine metres above the ground and five metres above the ground isn't a great deal. There's a tad less ground loss involved. But to be honest with you, as you can see there, in terms of gain, in terms of the likely patterns involved, they're very similar antennas. Uh, if you look at the gain figure, which is the, the column that has GA on it at that table towards the bottom, there's literally hardly anything between them at all. 
Uh, you will notice, however, if uh, looking at that same table, that under the uh, next to the SWR, you've got the uh, uh, you've got the reactants there, which is very very um, very noticeable on the doublet. That's the pink figure of minus four five seven. So the feed line will have a bit of a a bit of a bit of a time. You, you'll get a match, but the feed line may well suffer a little bit from high SWR, as you can see from that figure. Now four fifty or three hundred ohm is pretty forgiving. But I've modelled it on 300 ohm with about 25 feet to 300 ohm. And you're going to have a loss of about 1.5 dB on the feed line. So nothing too terrible. Um, but there will be a little bit of payback there. And there'll be a bit more loss on the feed line with the uh, with the doublet compared with the linear loaded dipole anyway. Let's look now then at the doublet of, on 40 metres compared with the, the flat top conventional dipole. Half wave dipole for 40 metres. If we look back on here, look. Um, OK, there's a little bit more of a gap this time compared with the full-sized uh, half-wave dipole. Not a huge amount, though. I mean, again, if you look at the gain figures, this time shaded in yellow, there's about a dB and a bit in it. Uh, but again, you're going to have that little gap as well in terms of a little bit more of a, of a higher SWR, obviously, on the feed lines, you can see. And even though the ladder line does bring that in a little bit in terms of the fact it'll handle higher SWR far better than 50 ohm coax, you've still got a little bit of a difference. But we're only talking about maybe overall around 2, 2.5 dB, which, okay, is still 2.5 two dB. There may be a little bit of tuna loss in there as well, of course, being a doublet, but at the end of the day, it'll still get you onto 40 metres with a pretty respectable signal, even compared to a full-size dipole uh, in a very small space. Of course, the one great thing about this antenna is the fact it's multiband. So if we look now at the plot here for 20 metres, we can quite easily get uh, get ourselves onto 20 metres here. And you can see on the left-hand side, you've got the uh, the azimuth pattern there. And I've marked it at five degrees, which is kind of the, the angle we want to hit that for low, for low angle DX. Now, with the height we've got this antenna at, at 20 metres, it's still quite a bit below a half wavelength off the ground. So it's not going to be shooting fantastically well at those, at those lower angles. You still work DX, by the way, but it won't be as strong as it could be if you had this uh, doubled up another maybe 20 or 30 feet, another 5 or 10 metres off the ground would be a different story. But at the end of the day, it still does fairly well. Uh, I've marked, if you look at the azimuth there on the left-hand side, I've marked those bits in yellow where the performance is at or better than minus 6.1 dB or minus 6 dB. That minus 6 dB figure is, is significant because that tends to be what you'll get at 5 degrees off the horizon omnidirectionally with a vertical antenna like a quarter wave or a half wave vertical. And the yellow bits I've, I've actually shaded in there on the left hand side is where roughly where that uh, that gain at least reaches minus 6 dB at 5 degrees off the horizon. So to be honest with you, it's only really directly broadside. If you imagine the the the, um, the antenna, if you look at the left-hand uh, diagram, the antenna is running from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock right across the middle. So those two bits of yellow are really broadside. The wire is there and they're broadside to the wire, as you'd expect a dike bolt to perform. Now, if we go to the higher bands, we see a bit of a different story because as we go higher up in frequency, the fact it's uh, at the height it is means it becomes nearer to being a half wavelength off the ground, which brings some benefits. Let's look at 17 metres. The 17 metres, if you immediately look at the left-hand diagram again, five degrees off the horizon, suddenly we're seeing uh, better, better performance in terms of a lower angle uh, gain. We can see again that we're looking at it in terms of being at least or better than minus 6 dB. And look how much of suddenly of that, uh, of that pattern in yellow is now being shown as being better than minus 6 dB. And in fact, at the very top of that uh, page there from for the 17 metres, we can see we've got a, a, a maximum gain of minus 2.5 dB. Now, again, mainly broadside, but it's becoming a little bit more omnidirectional in terms of that gain. So that's very useful. If we go to 15 metres, look at that. Now we're seeing a big difference on 15 metres. Suddenly, all the way around, we're seeing this antenna making at least, or bettering, minus 6 dB. So we're now competing very well with a quarter wave or a half wave vertical on 15 metres at a 5 degree angle for DX. Again, at the top of the page, we can see 
our maximum gain at 5 degrees is minus 0 0.7, which again, if you look at the red arrows I've drawn there, are of course very much broadside to where the antenna is. But all the way around, we've got some really good performance. So this is probably better in many ways than, uh, than putting up a vertical for 15 metres. Let's check out 12 metres. Similar story. In fact, what I've done here, rather than marked out the best part, the best gain, I've marked out the worst gain. So off the ends of the antenna now on 12 metres, we've still got a gain of minus 4.8 dB, which you can see on the left-hand side, that yellow splodge there. And on broad side, off the, off the maximum areas of gain, we've now got minus 1 dB. So again, we've got a very decent, very good performing antenna for 12 metres here at 5 degrees off the horizon. So again, we've got some promising performance here for DX. And finally, for 10 metres, same story as 12 metres in, 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 in many ways. You can see there, actually, because the antenna isn't quite symmetrical in the fact that the, the way it would set out, there was a slight difference in, in both the legs. On the left-hand side, we can see we've got a slightly bigger lobe on that left-hand side marked in yellow. And there are the areas of peak gain, 0 0.8 dB. And uh, to be honest with you, none of that, uh, again, none of that pattern was any worse than minus 6 dB. So on 15, 12 and 10, and to a lesser degree on 17, we've got an antenna here with very promising gain indeed on those higher bands, a respectable performer on 20, and something, to be honest with you, which will give you a performance in the real world that will be probably nearly every bit as good as certainly the linear loaded dipole, and, you know, not very far behind at all, the, uh, the full-sized half-wave flat-top dipole for 40 metres. So there we go, uh, a promising antenna, certainly in those higher bands, and something to get you on 40 metres with. If you like what you saw there and you fancy subscribing, click on the link here. And if you want to see the next video popping up, then click up there. But in any case, have yourselves a, uh, a, good, uh, a good week on the radio, and I hope to catch you again soon. Until the next time, take care now. Bye-bye.